Welcome everybody and welcome to Coffee with Marcus on what is today March 25th day 23 of the stock market crash 2020. Today something amazing happened something that hasn't happened in seven weeks and we'll look into this in just a moment. Well let's talk about has the market found a bottom and I will tell you what I think will happen here over the next few days and as I promised yesterday today I'm going to show you how I how exactly I took my account, uh, I grew my account by 20% in less than a week by trading put options. So I'm going to show you a specific example. I'm going to show you the exact strategy that I used and we tried to put a trade on market conditions permitting. Okay, just make sure that everybody can hear me and see me. If you can do, do the following, click on like or what does YouTube say? I think it says like, right? So Click a like or a thumbs up. This way I know that you can hear me and that you can see me. And then we're getting started. All right, that looks good. All right, good to see everybody. So let's actually switch over to the charts. And uh, here's what I wanna do. So right now the Dow, I mean, we are still open another uh, 30 minutes and uh, sound is good. Okay, in 30 minutes, the markets will close. Right now we are up 5.9%. And that is amazing. Yesterday, we were up 11%, which was the single biggest one-day gain since the 30s, since 1930-something. And here's what happened today, what makes it very, very unique. And then we'll talk about, okay, how exactly does this factor in for the remainder of the week? Because today is Wednesday. I want to switch uh, the charts here for just a moment. And here's what I want to do. I am coloring right now the bars whenever you see a down day meaning that we had a negative day you see that the bars are red and whenever we had a positive day that we finished in the green you see that the bars are green now if you look at the last seven weeks since we started this crash again today we are on day 23 and even going back before this until february 6th so for the past seven weeks we didn't have in the dow jones a single occurrence where the market was going up for two days in a row. The first time in seven weeks today, the market is going up for the second day in a row. So, is this good news? Does this mean that the worst is over? Well, be careful. Right now, the market is going up because there is the stimulus plan that is passing the Senate and the House right now, and we have a pretty good idea what's in it, but we don't know just yet. Now, tomorrow, Tomorrow we have a very important report. I will show it to you. Tomorrow, the unemployment claims are being released. So this video here right now, I'm doing it live on March 25th. And tomorrow on March 26th, we have the unemployment claims. Now, the unemployment claims, as you can see, over the past few weeks, so they're being released every single week. They have been at around 200,000. Then they jumped up when they were released last week to 281,000. Right now, take a look at this. Right now, it is estimated that 1.5 million people have filed for unemployment last week. This does not include this week. Now, you know that this nasty virus that is going around right now makes airline shut down, hotel shut down, restaurant shut down, retail shops shut down, company shut down. I, I mean, you might be affected. I don't know about you. Here in Austin, we have the stay in shelter order. Is that what it is? I think it's stay in shelter or stay in place or something like this. Pretty much quarantined. Yes, being at home like most other people right now. By the way, how is this for you? How does it work out staying at home? I mean, for me, it's a pretty normal thing since I'm not commuting to an office at all. I just have my computer in the market, but it is still strange, isn't it? Okay, so anyhow, the unemployment claims. If tomorrow morning the unemployment claims are much higher than the 1.5 million, the market might tank. So this is why I don't think we are out of the woods yet. It really depends what we'll see tomorrow. And keep in mind, what will be reported tomorrow on Thursday 26th is for last week. So it's not even including this week. And as we all know, things have gotten worse. So keep this in mind. Keep this in mind as we are looking at the markets right now and we say, yay, they are going up for a second day in a row. Let's switch the, the chart layout here for a moment. <clears throat> to actually uh, show you what I'm seeing. So the good news is, you know that I like to look at three indicators and the three indicators that I like to look at are the RSI, 
the stochastics and the MACD. Now, as long as all three indicators are here, the RSI below 50, the stochastics below 50 and the MACD below its moving average, this means that the market is more likely to go down. Today, something awesome happened. Today, the RSI dipped above 50. It's at 51. This is why I see a black bar. So for the first time since we started this crisis, actually, well, since uh, February 25th, for the first time, we see a shimmer of hope. Is that what you say? Shimmer of hope? Is that a word? Let me know in the comments if there's a word or not. Anyhow, uh, but again, tomorrow the unemployment claims will tell us the true story. If they really come in at 1.5 million or below, which is incredibly high, seven times higher than it usually is, uh, but then the market should be okay. However, if it comes in much higher tomorrow, um, we can be in trouble. All right, thus far, is this making sense? Let me come back to you for full screen here for a moment. Uh, is this helpful? Because uh, I'm about to show you how exactly I grew my account by uh, a little bit over 20% or around 20% over the past few days. And I wanna show you the exact strategy that I used here. But if this makes sense, let me know in the comments as well as giving me a thumbs up. Always appreciate when you like these videos because this way, I mean, this is our way of uh, connecting, right? <laughs> it's, I don't want this to be a one-way street. Appreciate all the comments that are flying in right now. Really appreciate it. All right. so. Are you ready to see what I've been doing with my account? Now, preface. Usually, I like to use the PowerX strategy, as you know, and my software, the PowerX Optimizer, to find the best stocks to trade. And that strategy works in normal market conditions, which we have 95% of the time, 98% of the time. But as you know, right now, we have very specific market conditions. And in these very specific market conditions, you can apply specific trading strategies that you can't use during normal times. And that's what I wanna show you. So the strategy that I'm showing you right now are perfect when a market is going down. And again, I don't think we are out of the woods yet. So this is why if tomorrow the market tanks a little bit more, I, I think that we have found a temporary bottom here, but is this the long-term bottom? We will know more next week. Anyhow, so since the market could tank tomorrow and possibly on Friday or maybe even next week as we have more bad news regarding this this horrible, nasty virus that is going around here. Um, somebody told me I shouldn't say the name on YouTube because then they're banning me or something like this. So this is why I call it the horrible virus. But you know exactly what we are talking about, right? Anyhow, <clears throat> so let me show this to you. Just want to grab a sip of coffee. Here we go. All right, let me, I've prepared a few things for you. So let me bring this up here for just a moment. Let's talk about selling put options. Now, this is a strategy that works really, really well when the markets are going down, when the markets are crashing. So very, very, very important disclaimer. This, what I'm about to show you is dangerous. Only do this when you really understand what is going on, do not blindly follow what I'm doing here, right? Make sure that you understand what I'm about to tell you. Now, first of all, I wanna show you, you know what, let's actually talk about results first. Let's talk about results before we, I show you how it works. Last Friday, I, uh, I traded with my mastermind students. And uh, in order to do this, I said, you know what, for this specific situation, I'm setting, a set, I'm setting aside a $25,000 account. So I have multiple accounts and I have my main account in which I trade the PowerX strategy. And I, I set aside a specific account right here for this strategy that I'm about to show you. This account last Friday, uh, four days ago, was at $25,000. As you can see right now, it is at $30,000. The unrealized profit right now, $3,900. Um, and... Today alone, we're up $575. Uh, we already sold, a, uh, I sold a few positions worth uh, around $800 or something like this. So that's where we stand. And uh, trading up a $25,000 account to $30,000 in a matter of a few days, it's not bad at all. Now, keep in mind, these results are not typical. Pardon disclaimer, I've been doing it for a long time. I kind of know what I'm doing here. This is why I have my private clients who are following along, right? Which I can personally mentor, but please, 
I'm not making any income claims here. I'm showing you what works for me and my results are not typical. They're really, really good. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> okay, good. So let's uh, jump back here to the presentation and let me show you how exactly it works. Okay, so you're selling a put option and you're collecting a premium for this. So when you're selling something, think about it like this. If, um, if I wanted to sell this amazing coffee mug to you, trade what you see, not what you think. And let's say I wanna sell it to you for 10 bucks. I would get 10 bucks, right? Same here. Same here. Um, when you're selling options, you are getting a premium that is being deposited in your account. If the stock, the underlying stock, is above the strike price of the put option, you gotta keep the premium. And if the stock is dropping below the strike price, then you might have to buy the stock at the strike price. And again, you know me, I like to keep it simple. Yes, this is oversimplified, but I want you to understand the concept because we can drill down to the details in a little bit. I just want you to understand the high level concept first, and then I'll show you the exact mechanics. Okay. But let me make sure, is this making sense thus far? So you're selling a put, you're keeping the premium. As long as the stock stays above the strike price, we're good, we just keep the premium and everything is fine. If the stock drops below the strike price, you might have to buy the stock at the strike price. Now let me show you a very specific exa example. This is what I did last Friday. I sold the Tesla uh, put I sold actually two Tesla put options at a $100 strike price that expires on 417, so in three weeks from now. And I did this on March 20th, last Friday. Per option, I received a premium. I was, I was selling it. I received $289 per one option. Since I was trading two options, I received $578. So far so good, makes sense? If so, Type a yes in the comment that I know that you're following me. So as long as Tesla stays above $100 for the next three weeks until 417, I'm going to keep the $578. If Tesla drops below $100 by 417, I would have to buy 200 shares of Tesla. Now look at this, right now, I mean, I took the screenshot this morning, Tesla is trading at $552. What do you think? How likely is it that Tesla is dropping below $100 over the next few weeks, over the next three weeks? Not very likely, right? <laughs> exactly. So, however, if I would have to buy these shares, I would have to buy 200 shares at $100, so I would have to come up with $20,000. This is why you must have a margin account, and we'll talk about this here in just a moment. Okay, making sense thus far? No. Would I be mad if I could buy Tesla for $100? Not at all. The last time Tesla was trading at $100 was in 2013. And in 2013, Tesla didn't have their shit together. You know this. I mean, at this time, they were still struggling. They had one car, the Model S. They didn't have the Model 3. They didn't have the Model X. They were struggling. They didn't have as many uh, factories as they have right now. So first of all, it's very unlikely that they drop below 100. If they do, I would be happy to own Tesla at $100 a share. Who wouldn't, right? Okay, so very important. What you need in order to do this strategy is a so-called margin account. Now, uh, you already know, I am not a big fan of Robinhood. If you go with any traditional broker like TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, um, who else do we have? Schwab, uh, E-Trade, Interactive Brokers. That's where you can apply for a margin account. And what does this mean? When you apply for a margin account, you can leverage the money that you have in there. So if you put $10,000 in there, they allow you to trade $20,000 worth of stock. So here, for example, in this, exam uh, in this specific case, if you put $10,000 in and you have a margin account with a leverage of one to two, you would have enough money in the account to actually um, buy the shares because the broker will lend you the other 10,000 that you don't have. Make sense? I'll do another video on margin accounts where I go into more depths, but I, I just want you to understand the concept. There is something like a margin account 
over the next few days, maybe even tomorrow, I will do another video where I explain all of this in detail. Now, if you are a more experienced trader, you can ask your broker to increase your leverage. I personally have a leverage of one to four. So for every $10,000 that I have in the account, I have a buying power of $40,000. It's pretty much like uh, using a credit card. When you use a credit card responsibly, your bank is automatically raising your credit limits, right? This makes sense. Let me just come back here. <clears throat> for a moment. So that's how it works. When when you show the bank or here in this case, the broker that you are trading responsibly, that you're trading with stop losses, right? And that you're not a, a renegade trader. If you are responsible, then you can ask the broker to increase your leverage. Now, some brokers increase it even higher to one to five, one to six, maybe even one to eight. I wouldn't go this far. It's mainly international brokers who do it. One to four is really uh, the maximum that, that I recommend, and you should start off with probably one to two. Now, also very fair warning, leverage is a double-edged sword. It can work for you as well against you, so make sure that you know what you're doing. Don't jump in it right away. Okay, good. <clears throat> so, now, if you get assigned the stock like Tesla for $100, you have two options. First, you can keep it so it will be a long-term investment, and that is why I said, I set aside a very specific account to do this, uh, a separate account. I'm not doing it in my main account. I'm doing it in a smaller account here. Because you know what? I wouldn't mind holding on to Tesla if I buy it for $100 and it goes up to what? $900 again? Very possible. Not in the next few weeks, but maybe in the next few months. Who knows? The second possibility is that you sell it. So as soon as you're getting assigned, as soon as you see that the shares are appearing in your account, you can immediately turn around and sell it. So this way you get rid of the shares, you still keep the premium that you collected because what you sold initially, right? I mean, this is the premium that you collect. You don't have to give this one back. Okay, I know that there's tons of questions and I will answer the questions here in just a moment. Just wanna make sure that we are going through this because I also want to place the trade live here. And we have another 13 minutes while the exchanges are open. So I wanna see if we can get this in. So my trades, I've already shown you the trades. I will go through them maybe in a little bit later, but in a nutshell, uh, let me just bring it up here. So in a nutshell, what I did, I um, sold a Tesla put. So I'm betting to, to buy Tesla at 100. Boeing, I sold uh, an 85 put where I said, hey, if I get if I get Boeing shares for $85, I'll be fine with it. Right now they're trading at 160 or something like this. I was betting that MGM was going up again. So this is where I said, you know what? I'm selling the three put. USO, which is mirroring the uh, the crude oil, I said, I don't think it's gonna go any lower than $4.50 and you see the, the expirations here. And then uh, I also sold a Love putt. Love is uh, Southwest Airlines because I thought these airlines cannot get hammered anymore. Now, what I'll do to towards the end of the video, we'll look at the charts so that you see the exact levels, but I don't wanna miss uh, placing a trade because we have 12 minutes left to do. Okay. So let's go back and let me just uh, show you. Here we go. Actually, let me let me minimize this so that we don't have this in the background and then I'll bring it back in just a moment. Good. So these are my trades. So here's exactly how to do this. Let me show you the exact strategy. Number one, you need to find a stock that you like because you might have to buy it and then you might have to own it. So make sure that this stock you like. And again, I like Tesla. I like Boeing. I like love. Right. I mean, I wouldn't mind getting those at a deeply, deeply discounted price. Again, Tesla, think about it uh, at one hundred dollars. It's trading at five hundred dollars right now. Um, Boeing at eighty five dollars. It is trading at uh, one hundred sixty five dollars right now. I wouldn't mind this. Number two, you want to check for the put options. And that's what we're going to do together here right now. I like to use put options that have less than 30 DTE. DTE stands days to expiration, okay? So that expire quickly. Some of the options that I have expire tomorrow. The other ones expire in three weeks from now. So I'm fine with it. No, actually not tomorrow, in two days from now. And I want to make, <coughs> excuse me, at least 2%. Because if I make 2%, in a matter of a few days, it becomes 4% or 8% when you have a margin account, right? We talked about it when you leverage it. So instead of making 2% on a leverage of one to two, you're making 4% your, on your account 
or on a leverage of one to four that I made, you're making 8%. That's how I've been able to grow this account in a few days by more than 20%, 25%, maybe 24.89. You have seen the results. Okay. So tip, you can apply this strategy best after a big down move. Why? After a big down move, the premiums, what you get is higher. See, it's like uh, if this cup here, trade what you see, not what you think. Always keep this in mind. If this cup would be worth $8 after we're going up, if we would go down, I could sell it for $12, right? So the premium is higher after the market goes down. So today, not ideal market conditions because the markets rallied another 5%. But I promised you that I'll be here to do this. So I want to go through the mechanics and uh, probably then we do another session after the market goes down, which could be tomorrow after the unemployment claims are being released. And if so, we will play some more trades live tomorrow. What do you think? But I want to walk you through this. So let me show you a live example here right now. So I'm going back. There we go. I'm going back to my trading platform. Uh, actually, let's take a look at the charts first. So one of the stocks that, as you know, I think will continue to go up is Boeing. Now, look at this. Boeing right now is trading at 157. Today was soaring 23%, up 23%. So here is the bet that I want to place. I want to say, you know what? I believe that Boeing will not go below $100. So I'm marking here the $100 line for the next two days. That is my bet. Now, that's a high probability bet. So you'll see I'm not getting much money for it because it's very high probability. What, what do you think? How high are the chances that by Friday afternoon, right now it's Wednesday afternoon, that by Friday afternoon, Boeing drops all the way from 156 to 100? Well, what are the chances? Pretty low, right? I mean, always keep in mind, it can happen. If it does happen, I wouldn't mind owning Boeing for hundred dollars because look at this if you look at the past in normal times i'm going to a weekly chart in normal times boeing has been trading as high 320 360 400 so i wouldn't mind holding boeing as a longer term stock if in fact the very unlikely scenario happens that over the next two days boeing is dropping below 100 dollars. now let's see how much premium we can get for this so i'm switching back to the platform and I'm going to Boeing. I'm looking for the options. And uh, here I'm looking for the put options that expire in two days. And I'm looking for the one, holy moly, that's a lot of premium. That is awesome. Wow. Okay, love this. Okay, so I'm selecting the 100 put option that expires in two days from now. So I wanna sell, um, I'll just see. Let's sell, let's sell maybe five. Five sounds good. Okay, so I can get uh, the bid and the ask is uh, 43 over 49 cents. So I can probably get 48 cents for this. Let's see if we can get 48 cents for this, which is the mid price. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to show you what effect this has on my account. So we're clicking on margin performance. So if I'm selling those, I get $240. Again, not a whole lot because it's a very, very high probability bet, but I'm getting $240. How does this impact my account? Well, the broker reserves $5,236. This is what you see right here, okay? So this means if I'm taking the $240 by 5236 that I need to tie up, oops, <clears throat> Where is my fancy dancy calculator? Here we go. It is 4.5%. Holy moly, I can make 4.5% in two days. I don't know about you. I like that. What do you think? Shall we do it? What do you think? Is that a good bet? Again, I don't mind having Boeing for $100. So keep in mind. So here I'm selling five. This means that I would have to buy 500 shares for $100, so I would have to put out $50,000 if I'm getting assigned, which is okay for me because I could turn around and sell them right away. And uh, again, since I'm having a, mar uh, a leverage of one to four, it means on my $25,000 account here, I can buy and sell stocks of $100,000. So if you have a much smaller account, please adjust the position size accordingly. 
And again, we'll do more examples as the markets are more favorable for us because again, the markets are more favorable if they're moving down. And what did they do today? Moving up. Okay. So what do you think? Shall we do it? Yes, no, maybe. Ugh, or, the, or bid and ask is running away here. Ah, look at this while I'm talking, while I'm teaching. We need to adjust it. Let's actually see if we can get at least uh, 45 cents here. Ugh, it's getting close. Close. Uh, I want to do this. I have to lower it. Um, so that's a disadvantage when you're teaching and showing this live here. But let's just do this. I want to submit it and see if we can get 42 cents here. Order partially filled. Let's see if we can get 5 or 42 cents. And we place the order. We have five more minutes in the market. And uh, let's see. It said order partially filled. Ah, I got two out of my five got filled. This is what you see here. Two out of my five got filled. Let's see if there's anybody who takes the other three at my price. I don't want to lower it right now. Otherwise, I'm fine with two. It's just an example. And again, when the markets are more favorable, I'll do it. So what am I doing right now? So let's actually remove this calculator here for a moment since it's floating over my head let's go back to the charts i'm betting that until friday afternoon today's wednesday so tomorrow and on friday i'm betting that boeing will stay above a hundred dollars if it goes below a hundred dollars i'll get a sign right now since i only sold two options 200 shares of boeing for a hundred dollars and that sounds good to me right <laughs> because then I can either say I sell it right away or I'm holding it as a longer term investment. That's why I said you must choose a stock that you like, that you wouldn't mind to hold, right? So these are stocks like, for example, Apple, Tesla, Boeing, whatever you like, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, now in a moment, I'm going to look at the questions, but is this making sense thus far? If it does, give me a thumbs up, uh, give me a like and uh, or type in yes, and I'll take a look at the questions. Just want to see if you're getting filled here on the other part. Um, so right now, again, when we started looking at this five minutes before, we would have gotten, what, 48 cents. Right now, I got it at 42 cents, but I'm fine because it's dropping and that's good. So the idea is that these options expire worthless. Again, this is a very, very brief introduction into options. And uh, you know what? I probably do a more thorough video if you want, if you like this, if you're enjoying it. Here in just a moment okay markets are going to close in three minutes from now and um, so very important disclaimers if you haven't heard me in the beginning if you are just tuning in this is a dangerous strategy because you can get assigned these uh, these stocks right and then you own the stock so you need to make sure that you have enough money in your account that you have a margin account and please you need to know what you're doing obviously i know what i'm doing my results are not typical at all not claiming that you will ever make money with the strategy, right? I mean, I believe there's a good chance that you will make money. I hope that this is making sense to you. And we can go more over it as we are still in this falling market here. Now, again, this is a strategy that I'm using right now in this very special market conditions. As we go back to normal, and let me just bring up the charts here for just a moment. So as we go up, oh, I got filled on all of these. See it are you here on the bottom of the screen. So we're good. Okay, got filled on all of these. So as markets are going back to normal, if you don't have this steep drop that we had here, because today is day, day 23 of our 2020 crash, then I'm going back to trading. Oops, you don't see me. Going back to trading the PowerX strategy using the PowerX optimizer. Okay, does this make sense? All right, good, 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 good. So Here's what I want to do right now. Since uh, this was it, in a nutshell, I'm going to take a look at your questions right now. So let's see what questions we have here right now. John, good morning from Australia. So good to see you, John. Let's see. There. can bring John in here. Okay. Good. Paul, good to see you. Nicole, Alvaro, so good to see you. Okay. Let's see. Temin, Christian, Ken, Raza. Okay. So uh, Alvaro is asking, any any reason why the VIX is going up? There we go. Any reason why the VIX is going up if the Dow Jones is also going up? Isn't it supposed to be the opposite? That is a great question. So the VIX is the volatility index. Let me switch back to the charts here. So it is the volatility index. And usually the volatility index goes up 
it goes up when the market goes down. You're absolutely right, Alvaro. Usually it does this. This just tells us that there's still a lot of uncertainty in the market, especially ahead of tomorrow's unemployment report. This is why I say, yeah, I do not believe that this year that we have seen the bottom just yet. I want to see what happens tomorrow after the employment report. Great, very good question here. Okay, good, good, good. All right, good, Kushal, so good to see you. Subscribed and liked, perfect. Okay, so uh, Leon says, let me see. Can I bring, bring up Leon here? There we go. Let me come back here. Uh, Leon says, looks like we already missed the bottom. I wouldn't bet on it. Tomorrow, the unemployment claims will, us will tell us the story. So we shall see tomorrow. And you see, don't worry about it. I mean, the fear of missing out is what's killing traders right now. If you jump in too early, you get chopped into pieces. I have been trading for, Jesus, 20 years, maybe even more. Can't remember how long I've been trading. And I can tell you, even I'm not able to catch a bottom. If you catch a bottom, you're lucky. Right. I mean, seriously, those people who say, oh, I caught the bottom. Trust me, they have wiped out their accounts more than they want to trying to catch the bottom. So anyhow, good point. Good point. OK. So this time, folks are coming covered by the stimulus that are unemployed. We shall see. Right. I mean, uh, we, we have some idea about the package. Uh, I, it seems that they're handing out some money. Uh, around $1,200 uh, for singles, uh, $2,400 for families, $500 for each additional child, depending on the income brackets here. But is, is this really covering unemployment? If you're unemployed for the next, I don't know, two, four, six, eight weeks, is this covering it? Don't think so, right? So anyhow, <clears throat> good question here. All right. Good. The factory I'm working for closed for two weeks, and I really hope that they open again in two weeks. We don't know how long this nasty crisis will last, right? I mean, hopefully it will be, will be over soon. Okay. John says it's called a glimmer, not a shimmer. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> Talked about the shimmer of hope. Okay. Good. 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 All right. So Bruno is asking. Uh, can I send you a sample of great coffee? Bruno, I would love to have a sample of great coffee. Why, why don't you please do the following? Um, ask Nicole at rockwelltrading.com for the address where you can ship it to me. Send an email to Nicole at rockwelltrading.com and she'll give you the, the address of where to ship coffee. And I would love to sample your coffee. Would really appreciate it. Okay, good. Okay, Alvaro is asking a great question. What is the difference between selling puts versus buying puts? I thought buying would be somehow identical to shorting. That is right. When you buy a put, you hope that the stock continues to go down. When you sell a put, you're on the other side. So when you're buying a put and you expect the stock to go down, what is the opposite? When you're selling a put, you expect the stock to go up. And that's what I think is happening right now, at least over the next few days, over the next two days with the... Uh, uh, with Boeing. That's what I was looking at. All right. Fantastic. Um, so Antonio is asking, doesn't selling puts require having a larger account? Yes, absolutely. It does. And if you're building a small account, this is when really get the PowerX strategy. We are shipping out the books again on Monday. Our printer took a little bit longer because of everything that is going on here. But the books are back in stock on Monday. So if you want to get the book, if you would like to have the book, I'll be happy to send it to you. And uh, all I ask in return is that you cover the shipping and handling, uh, which I believe is, is five or ten bucks, something around that. Uh, the team can probably put a link in the description here. Uh, so I'll be happy to ship you a copy of the book. It's a really nice book. Handsome dude on the cover. <laughs> OK, back to the questions. <clears throat> yeah, so if you're building a smaller account, use that power X strategy. Good point. OK. So Marguerite is asking, how do you pick the strike price for selling puts? Well, I want to make sure that is an excellent, excellent, excellent question. So here is how I do it. For Boeing, for example, I want to look at some resist or some support where I see, you know what? It's probably not very likely that it's going below it, especially over the period of time. So here I was looking at 100. Now for Tesla, see for Tesla, uh, I was looking at $100 at a strike price. Because I could get two hundred eighty-nine dollars. I mean, here I got what uh, forty-two dollars, so it was ridiculously low. 
But again, just looking at this uh, for love for uh, Southwest. When I traded this last week, I picked a strike price of there we go, seventeen dollar fifty. Let me go back to this. So. I looked at love and I said, you know what? I don't think that they will go any lower than $17.50. You see, I'm choosing strike prices that are very, very far out of the money. That's what it's called, right? So I want to make sure that I'm not getting assigned necessarily that I just keep the premium most of the time. But if I would get assigned, I wouldn't mind owning the stock. Great question. Okay, we come back to your full screen because there are so many great questions from you and... Uh, we will um, we'll stay on you for a few more minutes. Answer all your questions. Really appreciate you being here. Okay, so do I need a broker? Can I do this without a broker? You cannot do it without a broker. You do need a broker. The good news is these days, brokers are offering zero commissions. Go with TD Ameritrade, go with Fidelity, with Schwab, with, uh, with E-Trade. They're all zero commissions. Do not. Well, actually, you can do whatever you want. You're an adult. But I would uh, would not go with Robinhood. I did a video on this. If you're interested in it, Google um, Coffee with Marcus and Robinhood. Okay, and you'll see why I'm not a big fan of Robinhood. Also not a big fan of Webbull. But again, my personal opinion, um, I would say for beginners, probably TD Ameritrade would be a good bet. Very good, big, reputable company. Um, great customer service. So you do need a broker. Okay. So Antonio says, I believe I have a one to four margin uh, with TradeStation. That's great. I mean, you can ask them or you can just look at your account because they will tell you your buying power. They will say you, how much do you have in cash and what is your buying power, right? So one to four, absolutely. And again, uh, if you're a more experienced trader, uh, brokers are more likely to give you a higher margin. If you're absolutely new to trading, they might give you just one to two and say, let's get started. It's like when, you, when you're new out of college and you're applying for a credit card, you might just get a, a limit of a few thousand dollars, right? After you have been using a credit card for years, they might give you a limit of 10,000, 20,000, 100,000, 200,000, depending on uh, however you have been using this credit card here. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, John... Uh, says, I, I thought a put was a bet that a share would go down. If you're buying a put, if you're buying a put, then yes, but we are selling a put. Okay, good question. Okay, John, uh, here's the deal. If it is confusing, no worries. Watch this video again, right? Or as I said, I will probably do another video where I explain more of the mechanics here. I wanted to make sure that I get the trade in before the market's closed. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, so let's say uh, Lorena is saying, what do you see? It is a lot of premium. Um, okay, here's why I, I feel that it is a lot of premium. When we first looked at it, it was 48 cents, which translates into $48 because options come in 100 pack. It's like going to Costco, right? You cannot just buy one option. If you buy one, it's immediately 100. Now, $48. Um, Costco, uh, not Costco, geez. Boeing right now is trading at almost 160. So I'm betting that it will stay above $100. Uh, yeah, $100 for the next two days. So Boeing would have to drop, what, 50%, almost 40% over the next two days. Can happen. I don't think it will. If it does, no worries. I would own Boeing shares for $100. Okay. But this is why I thought... Um, I thought it was pretty decent premium. I, I thought I would get 30 cents, to be honest. Um, and I had to lower it to 42 cents because I was a little bit slow placing the trade since I was explaining it. So I probably missed out on a, an additional 12 bucks or something like this. <clears throat> All right. Good. Uh, that said, the down has come down nearly 600 points. Yeah, let's actually take a look at this. This is a great, uh, great suggestion here. Oops. Uh, let's just... Go back to the charts here and see where we where we closed. I mean, I'm always interested seeing where we close. So uh, what I like to do here is quickly check the Dow. Go to a five minute chart here so that we see what happens to today throughout the day. Oh my gosh, the Dow did sell off going into the close. What do you think why that is? Right? 
it's probably because people do not want to be caught on the wrong side when tomorrow un tomorrow's unemployment report will be released. We talked about this. So I am not surprised at all. You're right. The Dow has sold off. This is where we started this morning right here. So you can see then we were going down at first and rally, 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 rally. We're staying up here and then we tanked into the close. Yesterday when we were watching it, we were closing at uh, the day's highs. So good observation. You guys are getting really good at all this, huh? Are you enjoying this, the coffee with Marcus? Because I enjoy hanging out with you here, having my coffee together with you. If you're enjoying this, give me a thumbs up if you haven't done so yet. And uh, feel free to share this video with anybody who might find this helpful. If you say, hey, this was a cool video that I just watched. Uh, the dude is cool. Like a share. Kidding. <laughs> Anyhow, feel free to share it. Okay. So, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, Kushal said, oh, well, it ran away from me. I didn't get my 40 cents. Uh, I, I do believe so because going into the close, I believe that uh, Boeing, I got filled at 42 cents right into the close. Kushal, did you get, did you get filled? Probably. Yes. Okay. Um, just asking your options or bulk of your trading. Most of my trading is done in stocks, but every now and then, uh, when there are unique opportunities, I like to trade options. See, I've been trading for so long. I trade stocks, I trade options, I trade binary options, as some of you know, who are right now in the binary options class. I day trade futures, so um, a little bit of everything. Wherever money can be made, that's where I like to trade. Okay. Um... Let's see, what else do we have here? Okay, uh, Alberto is asking, uh, could we buy the put option to close before it expires in case we don't want to be assigned? Yes, yes, you can. And you see, it makes sense. Um, most of the time, you see Tesla, I sold for $2.89. Honestly, if this option drops down to 10 cents or 15 cents, I would just buy it back instead of risking it of leaving it open, right? So. It's a good rule of thumb uh, if you want to close it out when you see 80% of the potential profit. So here, in this example, our potential profit is uh, $240. So 80%, uh, let's just quickly calculate it, 240 times 0 0.8. So if we, if we see that we can buy it back and uh, we make $192 or uh, $200, we, we are fine. You can absolutely do this. Yeah, great question here. Okay, so Antonio says, Boeing has traded as low as 90 since March 18. I agree, and uh, it can happen. I don't think it will happen over the next two days, and that's the expiration that I'm trading right now. Usually, I like to go for a longer expiration, a week to three weeks. The reason why I did it is because I wanted to do the live example with you here, and again, if I see more opportunities over the next few days, we can take a few more trades like this. Okay. Ah, all right, Kushal says, uh, yeah, this was a roller coaster. Just got filled on this trade as well. Okay, good for you. Uh, Bernard is asking, will this be recorded for viewing later? Absolutely. This is being recorded. It will be on the YouTubes forever. Uh, as long as the YouTubes exist, I'm not going to take it down so you can watch it again. Use the same link that you used to come here. It'll be absolutely fine. Okay, good, good, good. All right. Shadow Stalker, I expect a limit down tomorrow. We shall see. The unemployment report will tell it all. Now, the unemployment report is being released before the markets open. Uh, let me go back to this. The unemployment report is being released at, here we go, unemployment claims at 8.30. That is Eastern time. That is one hour before the stock markets open. So we shall see. We shall see. So that's uh, definitely a report that everybody right now is keeping an eye on. Yep. Okay, let's see. I'm just uh, want to make sure because I don't want to keep you for too long, but I want to make sure that I answer the most important questions here. Um, okay, what's the difference between selling a put and a call option? You know what? That is an excellent question. Why don't I do another coffee with Marcus where we are talking about selling call options? I don't want to confuse you. This is why I think right now it might be a good idea to just stay focused on this strategy. And then I'll explain the strategy of selling call options in another coffee with Marcus. What do you think? If you like this idea, just type in uh, yes or let's do this or explain call options and I'll prepare it because I, I would like to prepare a few slides. Makes it easier for you to follow along, right? So if you like this idea, leave a comment. Let me know. 
if I see a lot of comments that say, yes, please do it, then I'll prepare it. Good, good, good. All right. So, that says all of my brokers are offering free trades now. I believe so. I believe that's what they do. Okay. I'm an investor new to this group. Would like to be an effective day trader. Don't day trade just yet. There's a huge difference. See, right now you're an investor. Long time buy and hold. Learn how to swing trade first. This is where you hold a position for a few days before you move on for day trading. Think about it this way, right? I mean, if you're an investor, it's completely different. If you start swing trading, it's like learning how to drive a car, right? And uh, so in the beginning, it is scary and then you get the hang on it. Day trading is like driving on the German Autobahn without a speed limit at 180 miles an hour. Don't do this just yet if you're about to learn how to drive a car. So focus on swing trading first and this is what we will mainly talk about here on this channel and in this group. Great question. Uh, Fiven says, how often do you get assigned or what percentage of the time for you? Um, I choose strike price that are very far out of the money, so it's very rare. Also, this is a strategy that I only trade, I don't know, maybe once a year. I, I mean, the market conditions have to be absolutely right for this. So my bread and butter strategy, again, is the Power X strategy, that's what I use, and this is where I'm buying calls and buying puts, so the opposite. That's what we do in normal market conditions. Okay. Good, 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 good. Okay, so Kevin, what's the difference? If you sell a call, we will talk about this in an upcoming Coffee with Marcus. Good, good, good. Marina, more advanced. Do you choose a certain delta? No, I do not. I really look at the charts. I keep it easy. Uh, deltas are really complicated for me personally. But hey, everybody's different. Every trader is different, right? Okay. Um, perfect. I think we covered most of your questions and I know it's getting long. Oh my gosh, we have been on here for... What does it say, really, more than 45 minutes? My coffee is getting cold. I don't know about you. So, sorry, Marina. Let me remove you for a moment here. So, time to drink the rest of my coffee. You enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Would you like to do this again tomorrow? Shall we meet again tomorrow? Because right now, with the markets being as great... Now, I haven't drunk the co drunk coffee. Okay. I haven't drunk the coffee, whatever. Okay, with the markets being as crazy as they are, this is my commitment to you. I want to be here every day for you. Uh, so usually it was uh, after the close at four o'clock and uh, we thought it would be easy, uh, much more fun to watch everything going into the close. So we start now half an hour early at 3.30. And while all this craziness is going on, this is why I'm titling this series right now, The Stock Market Crash 2020. Today is day 23. Today will be day 24. If you're enjoying this, if you want to meet again tomorrow, let me know and then we'll be here and I'll shoot you an email. Make sure that you're subscribing to the YouTube channel because this way YouTube gives you a notification. Something pops up whenever I go live and this way you don't miss it. All right. You have a great rest of the afternoon and I will talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Until then, take care.